holocaust of giants. When the gates of hell are open, I know there are some, quote, Christian authors that say we misunderstand it, but let me share this. He wasn't on the scene 20 years ago saying this day would come. I hate to have to take a dig at it, but that's exactly what I'm doing. Because, again, everything has put been put off, put off, put off. Someday has changed to that day. And what the Holocaust of Giants presents to people is all of the ancient myths and legends coming together and this mysterious culture culture called the Naragi in Sardinia. So, you know, I, I can tell you this, because Tim and the film team over there on the second uh, uh, trip, the one where they spent most of the time filming and interviewing, we have more interviews of people on record of talking about digging up the giants, digging up their bones, all the gold and silver, all the different artifacts that uh, came into uh, the possession of the church and, you know, those of you who have downloaded the movie on Vimeo, and by the way, if those of you want to see it right away, I would tell you this, uh, not download, forgive me, uh, stream it off of uh, Vimeo, V-I-M-E-O, some people pronounce it Vimeo, I guess I mispronounce it. But the point being is it's that important. There's no way people could have received what's in the Holocaust of Giants 10 years ago. Even though when I started writing about this on talk radio and talking about it, what, 20 years ago, you know, then it was just, oh, boy, that guy's, you know, fear monger, fear porn, trying to scare us. You know, why don't you talk more about Jesus? My answer is, who do you think gave me all this stuff in the first place? And for the record, I have been talking about Jesus. So the interesting uh, and anomalous part of this this Holocaust of Giants is uh, uh, already, you know, as soon as we uh, are capable and able, and we use the funding from one DVD to produce the next, we're already on number four, laying out uh, uh, some amazing information. And I'm, I'm the kind of guy that likes to tell everybody the end of the book at the beginning, so they rush to the end. You know, I, I like to give the bottom line. I won't in this case. But we built up to the point where people say, I won't believe it until I see it, you know? You, you, you guys you wanna, are crazy. Well, you, you don't want to see yeah. that, man. <laughs> yeah, and, and so, you know, the deal is is that, that they're going to see it. And let's just share this. Your program, Doug, goes all over the world, okay? You know that, you know? I think uh, I ran on my – I don't run anything on my website. I can barely do anything but drag and click. But I talked to my webmaster to get the stats – and I think it's pretty amazing, Tim. Uh, how many countries are represented on our, our uh, Vimeo streams? It, you know, do you remember? We have uh, fifty six. Well, I mean, for this, yeah, it's for this for the Holocaust of Giants. We have people from forty four countries who have streamed the film. Yeah, but I mean, on Holy See, how many? Wasn't it fifty sixty somewhere in there? Uh, the on Holy See was more. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it was it was more like uh, yeah. actually, I can tell you right now, it was. Um, the Unholy Sea, we have like six, six, 60 countries. And we're already, you know, seeing uh, the interest coming in uh, from, I'll tell you what's interesting to me. You know the people that are the hunger is for truth? And this is astonishing to me. And God bless the, the Australians and the South Africans have been incredibly faithful. And it's interesting because the Christians in South Africa just – banded together, and not over the giants, but over repentance for their country, because they are facing genocide. And, and a lot of people don't know that. By the way, you know, I, I'm telling you point blank, I had an eyewitness testimony that I uh, happened to be the guy that I was filming with for the last two days down in Yellowstone National Park, and I just uploaded a very important story that people will understand. If there wasn't Yellowstone National Park, there would have been no, if you will, foundation to do what's now being done in molecular biology. And it's an amazing story. It's on my website, 2015. So in talking to South Africans and getting the emails, the more we talk to people, they say, are you aware of our uh, legends in our country, especially Australia, and they call it dream time? Are you aware in the South Pacific of all the uh, islands and all of the cannibalism? You see, one of the things that, that I would call evolutionary history doesn't want to do is they never want to tell the truth. They present facades. 
they uh, present false narratives, and everybody thinks that everybody's just basically a naked Neanderthal running around looking for a good-looking woman, hitting her on the head, you know, and over thousands of years, uh, things evolved. Well, now it's reversed. There are women in home clubs beating men on the head, dragging them out. No, I'm just kidding. But the point is, actually, maybe not. The, the fascinating thing, Doug, is that we're in a time period now that the cannibalism, the child sacrifice, and these are Canaanite practices and the lust for blood and the assumption of power. It's like Tom Horn once said, it's fascinating. The fallen angels want to interject themselves into our germline, in other words, be like us, and now you've got all the rich guys wanting to be like them. And in, 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 if you look at the dichotomy of that, it's, it's perplexing. Uh, higher intelligence, higher uh, uh, created beings than mankind you know, are basically trying to mess around and have sexual hanky-panky on the earth. Every myth, legend, and tradition that I have tracked, with the exception of minor ones, I'm talking the major ones in the world, all have the cavorting of the gods with earth women. So when we go to Sardinia, and by the way, Sardinia is tied to Atlantis, and I'll let Tim deal with that, but the point that people have got to understand is this, we're laying it out for you. It's like God has provided the uh, puzzle pieces that have been kind of left with question marks. Guess what? Those puzzle pieces are going into place now, and what we've done in Holocaust of Giants is is laid it out so, and, and I would say this, in my opinion, Tim has done a, a, a beyond, look, obviously we're friends, but this has nothing to do with it. He's done a marvelous job of taking the threads of Sardinia and Atlantis and, and cannibalism and the Canaanites and all the stuff we're talking about tonight and woven a screenplay that I believe is going to blow people's minds. And I mean that because the, the response we're getting is people love it. And, and Steve, I, I'm sorry for interrupting, but, but I'll just say this. The, uh, the, the uh, interwoven thread here is just amazing, and you guys did a fantastic job on this. And I would urge everyone to either watch it on Vimeo or order the DVD. But here's what, what, what Tim said and what you said as well. As, as we here at our offices, and even with Craig Sawyer, for example, um, who we met in Chicago, investigating Pedogate, the larger aspect of Pizzagate, Pedogate. People think it's not real, but but you know, what you said here, the relevance to what your research is, to what's going on today among the elites, the cannibalism. Folks, whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not, it's going on. And I just want to kind of, just really kind of punch that home because the context, the relevance of what you're talking about, aside from the giants, aside from the, um, the DNA giant uh, aspect of this, and I'm, I'm, and I'm sorry, I don't want to, you know, go down a, a, a dead end road here or a different road, but this is this is so relevant in so many ways today. The the Bible, you you and you and Tim through this through this video have really um, uh, made the Bible come alive, proven the historical accuracy, in my view, anyway, through this of the Bible as well as the legends that are that we never get to see the stuff that's in the Smithsonian that that we can't see. So thank you for that, but it's contextually relevant. I just wanted to throw that in there. I'll shut up now. Go ahead. Well, Tim, again, I'm going to turn it right back at, back at you, I guess, or right over to you. The thing that I think that is critical, why don't you share some of the stuff we've held, you know, and, and obviously, you know, don't spoil it. But there's actually no spoilers. There's just mind-blowing stuff. But, it, you know, as, as you're looking back now, after all the editing, after everything is complete, what is the resolve that you have after doing everything we've done from wherever we're at? You've been in Sardinia, you've been in Peru, I've been in the desert southwest, and, and the things that are coming out, what's the thing that just absolutely jumps out at you more now than when you began, you know, the task of uh, going to Sardinia? I, I mean, it's like it's unfortunate folding in real time, is it not? It is, and uh, I misspoke earlier. Our, th these films, the True Legend series, have been seen in over 105 different countries. And, yeah, I thought, uh, but yeah. 105, yeah. So uh, it, it's what's astounding to me is how, as we look at the landscape of 
what what we refer to as forbidden history, including giants and, and other things. Uh, it's amazing how much history has been swept under the rug, especially in the information age in which we live today. I mean, you can you can go and find something and take a picture, and instantly it's on Facebook. I mean, people are 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 filming themselves uh, committing suicide and killing others on Facebook live. So it's it's interesting to see the tapestry of this gigantic cover up. Um, that has existed for many years, and I'm wondering, at some point, it's going to fall to pieces. At some point, that we've been pulling on the thread, and um, and this curtain is, is is coming apart. Now, I said we were we we've been seen in over 105 countries our films, and our goal in the beginning was to not to produce uh, some small time. Uh, film and just sell it to uh, to a hardcore fan base. Our goal in the beginning was to compete with the Discovery Channel. Our goal in the beginning was to compete with the History Channel, was to compete with Ancient Aliens. That's what we set out to do. And I can tell you definitively at this point that in terms of our content, we are. And I can tell you that we are because I won't go into details, but we've been contacted by these entities and agencies representing them. And they're very interested in working with us now, and they're very interested in, in uh, some other conversations we've had. And they're taking notice what Gen 6 Productions has been doing, what we've been producing, the kind of content that's been coming out. And so it's only a matter of time. I mean, um, and people ask all the time, by the way, uh, well, where are the bones? Why don't you actually produce bones or film bones or whatever? Well, the truth is this. I had on occasion the, the opportunity to 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 take possession of bones. I chose not to for a number of reasons. Um, there are security concerns involved in all this. There are, uh, I mean, it's easy to sit behind a computer and type those kinds of things. But when you're actually in a situation where you're being watched, where you're being surveilled, and the stakes are very high, the stakes are high not only for you but for those who have accompanied you, your crew, and <clears throat> And also for, uh, of course, the, the, the equipment that you have with you and uh, the footage that you want to be able to get out of the country with. There's a lot of things that go into play here, but I can tell you uh, th th this isn't about a lack of evidence. All – there is so much – if you take – if you compile the totality of the information that we put into these three films, going back to True Legends Episode 1, Technology of the Fallen, taking a look at the – uh, the documentation that we exposed and translated from the from the conquest of Peru that states um, that 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 describes in great detail the discovery of giants the 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 mummified bodies of giants the skeletal remains of massive giants in Peru by the conquistadors and by the chroniclers um, and then you go to our next film and all the evidence that we that we put forward in the Unholy Sea concerning the cover-up uh, of not only giants, but also this vast underground world, the Shinkana beneath the, uh, beneath the Andes. And, and we, actually, it's a, it's a global phenomenon, this underground world. And, and all the information that we brought forth in the Unholy Sea, and of course, we were talking about the pre-flood world and the megaliths. And, and, and then we lead up to this film, Episode 3, Holocaust of Giants, which now we're dealing with giants in the context of the, of the post-flood world and the Canaanites. We are literally tracing this thread um, through history from the pre-flood world to the post-flood world, showing you the cover-up, um, the vastness of the cover-up, the complexity of the cover-up, not only involving the Catholic Church, but also the Smithsonian and, and, and the governments of particular nations. Um, listen, by the way, while it's on my mind, I was recently uh, talking with uh, a friend of mine, a, a famous guy, um, and an explorer, well-known explorer, and we were talking about the 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 proof uh, that has come out through scientific investigations of the kinds of things that we've been positing in our films, such as the existence of beneath Sacsayhuaman and beneath uh, Sacsayhuaman in Cusco and beneath um, Tiwanaku in Bolivia, the existence of not only underground tunnels, but underground cities, underground citadels, and the fact that these things are known, that these things are have been known for a while, 
and that there is, in fact, a deliberate, uh, which this audience is well aware at this point, there is, in fact, a deliberate, a concerted effort to keep these things concealed and hidden. It's, it's, it's this massive amount of history that's been, that it, it's like trying to hold down uh, an inflated ball. And, and the ball is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and it's pushing up with more and more force and more pressure. Eventually, that thing's going to come flying out of the water. And we're at the tip of the spear, um, uh, really inflating that ball, because it's, it's only a matter of time. We have the technologies, as I said before, uh, all over the earth. Everybody's got their, their uh, uh, video capacity on their phones and, of course, to take pictures uh, instantly uploading them to the Internet. And then we're pushing all of this information to the mainstream to such an extent that, again, representatives from some of these channels, Discovery, History, uh, uh, A&E, a bunch of the big A&E. channels uh, on, on television, the Travel Channel, are coming to us very interested in what we're doing, what we're talking about, um, because we are at the tip of the sphere, and I think they realize that it's inevitable. It is inevitable that at some point in the near future, uh, the, the, the facade is going to collapse. And, the, and, and what I believe is happening is that uh, they know, and when I say they, whoever you want to label them as, the priests of power operating behind the scene, the Luciferian elite, they know that that's the fact, and they're, that, that that is indeed a fact, and they're, they're conspiring. They're, they want to control the message, not so much to cover it up anymore, but it's, now it's about we have to control this narrative, and we have, to, we have to get ahead of it, and we have to control it. And, and what's happened and what we've seen is programs like uh, Ancient Aliens that, uh, you know, rises to the surface and becomes extremely popular uh, very quickly because there's a hunger People know that they've been lied to. It doesn't make sense that the Inca built the walls of Sacsayhuaman but left no records about it whatsoever and forgot how to do it. It doesn't make any sense. And because we're in the information age, and you can pull up Sacsayhuaman on the Internet and and take a look at detailed pictures and and videos and all kinds of things, and people just aren't buying it. So So out comes ancient aliens, and everybody latches onto that for a while, but it seems that... Uh, they're realizing that the, the, the explanations or lack of explanations that are coming from programs like a- Ancient Aliens are leaving them with more questions. And so here we come, Genesis Productions, and we're bringing biblical answers, the right answers to those questions. Not just, I'm not saying it's an alien, but it's an alien kind of stuff. We're bringing the pieces that are the true, not just, not just, uh, evangelical Christian pieces of the puzzle. These are the true and accurate pieces of history that we're putting into place. We're correcting the record, and not only in terms of giants, but in terms of the pre-flood world, in terms of a question, for example, that lingered in the mind of John Wesley Powell, which we feature in our film with Tom Horn, A Holocaust of Giants, concerning the migration of the giants, because uh, what, watch our film and you'll find this out, or if you've done uh, a, um, investigation into the Smithsonian cover-up, you'll find out yourself very quickly that the Smithsonian Institution, the leaders of the Smithsonian Institution, it wasn't a question. To them, it wasn't a question of, did giants exist? That wasn't a question. That wasn't in their minds. Uh, wait a minute. Is it true that giants exist? That was not the issue because we have Tom Horn documents in our film, the instances in, the instances in which the Smithsonian institution documents, in their own documents, uh, d- um, demonstrates that they were recovering the bones of giants, skulls that were big enough to fit over a man's head like a helmet, and things, uh, things of this nature that are recorded in detail and still exist to this day in the archives of the Smithsonian Institution. These are their records. So the question wasn't, do giants exist? The question was, where did they come from? What is their Origin, and I believe we answer that question definitively in the film. And it's and, and we and we and we we don't just answer it in the general sense and say, well, they came from the fallen angels, they come from the pre-flood world. That's true, but we go into much more detail. We tell you who they are. We make the connection uh, that a lot of people. I, I think that a lot of people have been missing. Even a lot of good researchers, I think, have been. We were missing it. It had to come and you know, it took us to go to Sardinia and do the do the uh, exploration and the, and the uh, expedition actually in Sardinia, putting the pieces together, and suddenly it clicked that what we're dealing with here is 
Um, we're dealing with the knowledge of the Watchers and the offspring of the Watchers being cradled in one particular uh, culture, and that was the Canaanites, which then became, of course, the famous Phoenicians. And it was the Phoenicians who propagated, who carried the seed of the Rephaim across the earth and propagated the race of the Rephaim all over the globe. And we're talking about that red-headed race of giants and the blonde-headed race of giants and the other races of giants that came from the land of Canaan. And who were the Phoenicians? The Phoenicians were, uh, if you want to know, if you want your mind blown about the Phoenicians, I suggest you read uh, David uh, Flynn's book, Sidonia. And I believe you can get it from stevequail.com, David Flynn's book, Sidonia. Fascinating read. One of the best books I've ever read. He absolutely decodes the Phoenicians in that book. And we pick up from there and we show you. I believe we trace the migration of the giants. What happened? Where were they coming from? And how were they getting all over the earth? And the Phoenicians were known for a couple of things. The Phoenicians were known for... One, well, let's talk about the things that the Phoenicians were known for, uh, publicly admitted that they were known for, and, th and then we'll talk about something that they, they're never admitted to be known for, which they were in the ancient world. First of all, everybody knows that the Phoenicians were known a as the Great Masons. They were the Great Masons of the ancient world. That's where we get, and we're talking in a post-flood context, by the way. That's where the, the Masonic, the, the Freemasons come from, the Masonic order uh, comes from the Phoenicians. Uh, remember, who did Solomon employ to build his to build the temple? Uh, to, to the great craftsmen, they were coming from Sidon and Tyre. These were Phoenician cities. These are where the Canaanites went to. These are where, in in many cases, the Rephaim were still existent among the Phoenicians. In fact, the the, the Phoenicians were known, by the way, as the great seafarers of the time. They were unsurpassed in their ability to navigate the seas. And there's a reason for that. The reason why the Phoenicians were such great builders and were such great seafarers is because they were preserving the knowledge of the watchers, some of the knowledge of the watchers that had been preserved from the world before the flood of Noah, and they were preserving the seed of the watchers and the Rephaim races that were still uh, existing among them. And that is the part of the story of the Phoenicians that is hidden. Because if you go back, I, I challenge you to find um, uh, frescoes of the Phoenicians. There are very few. And if you dig and you look and you find ancient depictions of the Phoenicians as we have, um, you're going to discover that some of those, in fact, many of them are depicting giants among the Phoenicians. That there is the, the Phoenicians in their boats and there's the regular size guy and then there's the giants that are among them. The Phoenicians were literally seeding the race of Rephaim all over the earth. But we believe that ground zero for the Canaanite giants, the Rephaim, uh, possibly before the invasion of Joshua into the Promised Land, but definitely after, was Sardinia. And that's why on this one island there were over 30,000 megalithic towers and hundreds of tombs that are to this day called the tombs of the giants. There was a, it was sort of a redoubt of the Rephaim of the, on the island of, Sardin, uh, of Sardinia, a convergence of the Canaanites, the Phoenicians, the Rephaim, and then a, um, a migration from the uh, island of Sardinia all over the earth. 